Hey, Jeff. Yes. Hey, Paul. How you doing? Good. Good. I'm out in um, Sanctuary Point right now, and the okay. service is horrible. There you go. Well, if we lose you, this will be recorded, so we'll get it posted. But uh, let's go ahead and awesome. get started, guys. Uh, but but thank you guys for being on here. Totally appreciate it. Um, you know, doing this every Tuesday morning at uh, 10 o'clock Mountain Time, where I'm at, uh, you know, noon Eastern Central. Uh, Nicole Smith is going to be doing the training today. Uh, we were talking, so been a realtor 26 years. 26 years. That's a long time. <laughs> I've been doing it 20. And that's a long time, but 26. So, and then uh, how many, let's see, before years in August, next August. So three and a half years, basically, at EXP. Correct. I, I conned all three years you've been here. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. So I know a lot you can share. For sure. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Look forward to to hearing what you got. Um, Guys, take notes. Any questions you might have, we'll open that up here as we go as well. Awesome. um, I'm going to go ahead and thank you. And thanks for for being here. And kudos to all of you who are um, in the... um, taking time out of your busy day to to learn more about your business. So I'm going to... Let's see. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, I'm going to share my screen so you should be able to see this. And uh, clearly photography is a beautiful thing, but (laughs) we're in reality check today. So this is a class that I teach every month uh, in the XP world as a requirement for the ICON um, uh, cultural requirement. So I don't know if any, has anybody here, if you have, raise your hand or put in the chat um, let me make sure I can see the chat. This I do want this to be interactive, y'all. So if at any point in time you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I've, I have revised this class, so it's not exactly, in fact, because I can share my screen, this is going to have, I think, a lot more impact for the folks who actually are able to join us today. Um, the bottom line is, um, I'm going to start with just a little bit about me. We're going to talk about systems Uh, why you're here, and then why they're so important to you, regardless of your production. So if you're just a brand new agent getting started, this is a great time to dig into this concept and these ideas. If you're a longtime agent looking to build your team or scale yourself or leverage your own time, perfect time for this as well. Really something for everybody here today. Um, so just a real quick transparency. Um, it's true. I've been uh, licensed in the Dallas Fort Worth area since 1995. Um, I am a solo agent. Um, and then I joined EXP, as you mentioned, in August of 2018. I'm so grateful that I did. So grateful that I took that coffee meeting and um, stock was trading at that point at around $3 a share. Um, the icon really has been life-changing for me. So for anybody, my position is anybody who sells 30 houses a year or more absolutely is leaving a ton of money on the table if they don't join us. Um, you know, RevShare hasn't been a huge focus of mine. I'm a producing agent. I know there are some folks who are super successful at doing both. And um, as of right now, I'm still just selling houses. I um, have been attracted people organically, which I think is a really um, awesome opportunity. Bottom line is I really think being an EXP agent has made me a better agent. Um, I've always been mindful of the mutual respect to have with peers and other agents, but you know, knowing that this relationship, this transaction may very well turn into an opportunity to connect with a future peer and um, certainly is always in the back of my mind as I communicate with folks and represent my own personal business, but also EXP in the marketplace. And I think that's true for all EXP agents. So I'm excited about that. A um, couple of things on why would I put my production up like this? Like, what the heck? Why would anyone do that? A couple of things. One is um, I'm very transparent and I believe in transparency. What you see is what you get. Um, I also, the, the point is I know my numbers. So, and I recommend that you know yours too, whatever it is you're measuring, whether it's your production or your rev share or what have you, the more you track and know your numbers, 
the more likely you're going to hit those goals that you set for yourself. Um, you'll note that a huge percentage of my business is repeat and referral. Um, that's been this way since the very beginning. I've been tracking the numbers like this since 2000. And clearly, you know, numbers have expanded and contracted. That's just the nature of a referral based business, which is what um, which is what mine is. And I know Dave had mentioned writing 20 personal notes this morning. So certainly that has been part of my business growth strategy as well. And then finally, just, just so you know, just so we're on the same page, um, what you see is my personal production. I do have a virtual assistant in the Philippines. Haven't always. I've had a lot of different help in a lot of different ways over the years, but um, building and managing a team has never been, that's not true. It was my strategy in the late 90s. And uh, what I learned from that is I really enjoy being in the trenches with buyers and sellers. So, um, but in order to do this production, I needed some help. So before I go too much further, um, I want to find out a little bit from y'all. So if you wouldn't mind, um, I don't know if it's easier in the chat to just um, put in the chat how long you've been selling real estate. I'm curious to find out um, the number of years of experience here. So if you wouldn't mind doing that for me. 20 years. Three. Perfect. You made it. One month. This is awesome. Two and a half. Love it. Well, what you'll find is an order licensed 12 years, but only selling for two. Isn't that the cool thing about having a real estate license? You know, you can gas pedal break, you can um, work to, you know, you can work to live instead of living to work. So I love that. I think being in real estate is the most freedom creating industry and I love it. So when you're in three months, awesome. Well, bottom line is regardless of your uh, production, regardless of your tenure. Hey, Brittany, 22 years. We're peers together here in the 90s, 15. I love that. So hopefully what you'll see from this is regardless of your production, regardless of your tenure, hopefully you're going to take away something today that will benefit you and your business. And by the way, whether you're watching this live or you're seeing a recording of this, I do provide links to everything I'm going to show you here in this presentation, um, not just these slides, but also these links and these systems. So um, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is something I've been building um, in general for the last 26 years since I started this business, but more specifically over the last five years and as these have evolved. Um, so this is to be interactive. This is going to be our course overview. I thought it was very timely when um, Brene Brown talked about, she quoted somebody that she had interviewed, um, James Clear of Atomic Habits, which is you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And y'all, whether you have them documented or have them written out or not, um, we have systems. And so what I what what you're seeing here is an evolution of this process. But ultimately, this was my uh, resource. So this was my inspiration. So if you're interested in this topic, then um, here are the two resources that are primarily used for this. Um, specifically, the E-Myth Revisited. Now, this the revisited version was written in 2004. This has been voted the uh, number one business book by the top 500 CEOs. So, uh, and if you've done um, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent or any of those other things, a lot of them talk about this E-Myth Revisited with Michael Gerber. And basically, he talks about how in order to scale a business, in order to have a business, there are really three roles that you that that are that are playing out. There's the technician, there's the manager and the entrepreneur. And bottom line, when it comes to real estate, so much of what we do is technician oriented. So as I'm doing this information, sharing this class with you, I'm assuming that you're a really good technician. I'm assuming that you're really good at lead gen. I'm assuming you're really good at follow-up. I'm assuming you're really good at showing property, doing all the technician things that if you didn't do it, or if you didn't delegate to someone else to do it, you wouldn't even have a business, right? There's the technician piece of it. The Michael Gerber example is McDonald's, um, it, you know, we're, that they have dialed in the systems on McDonald's so duplicatable that anybody can plug and play and deliver the same consistent product anywhere in the world. Now, obviously, McDonald's isn't maybe as much in favor anymore, but, but you get the point. And there's a lot of uh, 
uh, businesses out there that require that level of systems. In real estate, we tend to look at each deal as a different deal. And let's face it, there are no two deals the same. However, when you start dialing into it, you'll realize that what you do all day, every day is pretty much the same set of tasks and activities. And so the, the resource for bringing this E-Myth Revisited into real estate really is the E-Myth Real Estate Agent. So I, re I read this, I have it on Audible, I listen to it regularly. The author of this book, Brad Korn, he partnered with Michael Gerber, and he has a lot of resources as well. So again, if this is at all of interest to you, I highly encourage you to pick up these resources. So the, the big question is why? Like, why would you want to have systems? And I'll tell you why. Um, bottom line is, if you have a consistent process, um, in other words, a documented system with checklists, then that gives you confidence that you're going to then provide to your clients a consistent quality of experience. So whether you're showing today or showing next month or showing two years from now to somebody that your client referred you, your process is consistent. And by doing this, by having your consistent processes and quality of experience, you're going to have consistent results, period, in a paragraph. Um, now that's the benefits to your clients. The benefits to you, um, again, I'm a repeat and referral kind of agent. So when you get results for people, when you're really good at delivering this consistent process, quality and results, people are going to do business with you again, and they're going to refer business to you. Um, this frees up your time. Having these systems and checklists that I'm going to share with you today will free up your time to do other things. Now, I found in real estate, people are either motivated by money or they're motivated by time. If you're motivated by time, having these systems in place will free up your time to go do other stuff. If you're motivated by money, having these systems and checklists in place will free you up to go get more business. So however you slice it, this is going to give you, having these systems and checklists will give you a certain degree of sanity. I know we're all just a little bit crazy here in this business certain degree of the ability to sleep at night, knowing that all the balls you have in the air that are being juggled, nothing's gonna slip through the cracks. And then that creates an opportunity to even have more self-care so that we can then either go do more business or be more present for our friends and family, or ideally both. So that's why I think people should have checklists and systems. And, and a checklist, really the definition is just a list of items required, things to be done, points to consider, or to use as a reminder. So that's the ultimate definition of a checklist. Now my checklists, and by the way, I'm going quick. So I have a lot of material to cover, but at any point in this process, you have a question, just probably put it in chat because I'm not sure exactly how this view thing works, but let me get back to this. So um, there are anything you do, in my opinion, should be a checklist. So my systems and checklists have evolved. It used to be that I had a Word document and I had each transaction in a binder. So you literally would use paper. Obviously we've evolved since then. Um, I'm ultimately gonna show you what I currently do today with Trello. Um, but on what we're gonna talk about here in this is really just buyer processes, seller processes, and ultimately database um, management of that. And so I'm gonna share with you which ones I think everyone should have. I'm gonna dig into a little details of a couple of these just to kind of get your juices flowing and understand kind of behind what it is. I'm actually going to share with you all that I have. So as you see that, you can easily customize it. So um, whether you're listening in online or the recording, email me and, and request this and I'll, I have a system for making sure you have all this information that we're covering today. So I'll have my contact information at the end, but it's Nicole at NicoleSmith.net is the best email address to send your request to. Just put in the the subject line systems information or systems class and um, my assistant knows what to do with that. Okay, so for your home buyer checklists, um, here are the checklists that I recommend you have. Um, one is a pre-orientation checklist for, let's just say a local buyer. And that is all the things that you want to have with you and have prepared before you meet with a local, with a local buyer. And my, my recommendation is have it always the same. Um, your pre-orientation your pre checklist for a relocation buyer might look a little bit different. For example, um, if you are meeting some folks that are coming in from out of the area, then you may want to have the part of your pre-orientation checklist is I like to deliver a welcome package to wherever it is they're going to be staying the night before we're working together, which is tangible things like 
Texas treats or physical, um, there, believe it or not, there's still a handful of physical relocation guides that have overview maps. Um, if they are dialed into a specific area, I'll get some local publications, things like that, but just stuff for them to touch and feel and really just start that process off. So that would be something you'd want to have on your pre-orientation checklist with a relocation buyer. Um, you definitely want to have a post-orientation checklist as well. And that is what's the next step um, that's going to happen now that we've met. Maybe you're going to set them up on an MLS search, or maybe you're going to follow up with them in a, a week, or maybe you're going to refer them to your favorite lender, whatever those checklists are. Now on the showing tours checklist, I'm not going to go into detail on this class, even though I do in the one that I teach in EXP world, but bottom line is there are steps to this process. All of these processes that create a checklist. Um, for example, one of mine is when I get ready to show property, um, I not only take with me to the showing the full printout, the tax report, history on the property. I also do a quick CMA in the subdivision. Um, now, I'm not doing any hardcore analysis at this point because I don't even know if they like the house, but I want to be able to speak intelligently inside that house on where this particular property fits in relative to the other homes in the community. And the other thing it sometimes will do is show, let, let's just say that they said, I want to see 123 Main Street. And doing the quick CMA of the community, perhaps there's a new listing at 125 Main Street that for whatever reason they didn't ask to see, but I can see right then and there, if I don't go ahead and schedule that showing at that same time, we're going to get in that neighborhood. They're going to say, hey, can we look at this one too? Meanwhile, I've already jumped the gun, really creating a value for the client. So what you'll see is all of these systems, all of these checklists are centered around bringing more value to your clients, which ultimately serves them and will serve you in your business as well. At the end of the day, you know, some people just want us, just want an agent to let them in the house. But when you show up consistently with all this additional detailed information, they'll see the value that you bring is so much more that just, than just opening the door to a house. Okay, so that's, that's just some thoughts on the showing tours checklist. On the pre-offer checklist, I have a whole set of things that I do before we go to make an offer. And the first one on the list, y'all, is reaching out to that listing agent to make sure the house is even still available. I don't know about your markets, but ours is moving so quickly just because it shows to be active in MLS. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Or maybe it is active, but there's an offer deadline. And so that gives us the head start. Or let's just say it's rare. Um, there's not an offer deadline. It is still available. But having a conversation with that listing agent about what's important to the seller, whether it be the timing or the possession or what have you, that enables you to put together an offer that's more likely to be accepted. So again, we're bringing value to our clients by doing the steps on our checklists. Um, we also have an offer checklist. What goes with that? Um, option depending checklist. I'm going to go into detail on in this next slide. I um, also have a pending to close checklist and a post close checklist. I'm going to show you how these not only look, but what they are. Okay. Um, so for example, I mentioned to you that um, we, you know, I, my checklists have evolved. So what you can see here is what started out as um, just a Word document. We would slide it into the front page of a binder. And then literally we would check off each of these. So one of the things I'll mention to you here is that um, in order to delegate, in order to delegate effectively, you have to already, you, you the agent, have to have already identified what you want your client experience to look at. And I don't know about you, but um, I've learned this the hard way. Having an assistant, your assistant is only as effective as the direction you give them. And so the more specific you can be with the direction, the more specific, and I'll show you some literally cut and paste, copy and paste kind of documents, the more likely your systems will be delivered efficiently and consistently, again, creating this outstanding experience for your clients. So this is way, the way it started. So I tell you that I'm going to show you my Google Sheets. I'm going to share these links with you. I'm going to show you how I use it on Trello today. But y'all start wherever you are, even if it's just writing this out on paper. But you'll see there's a step-by-step -step process. We're going to make sure we have the execution date on the contract. We're going to make sure we have the brokerage 
forms. Again, I do everything paperless now, but we still create a folder. I'm going to show you that. It is digital. Um, we also do a critical dates letter, which I'll show you, to where as soon as a contract is executed, we send to our clients, sometimes still hard copy, depending upon the age of our clients, um, but certainly digital, because we know that these are dates they're going to ask us about throughout the process. And by the way, these are things we tell them, things we might even email them, but you know what? We're busy and our minds are going 90 to nothing during this process. So part of these systems is to overlay the information I'm already sharing with them in person or verbally so that they get it. They really understand and can anticipate things that are coming up ahead. So you can see just some of the details on this. Um, I'm going to show you now. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to exit full screen and I'm going to show you on Trello um, what this looks like. So on Trello, um, let me go here again. Okay, so on Trello, um, I have a buyer template and a seller template. So I'm going to show you, and then these are the active these are the active deals that I have currently going on. So I'm going to show you this buyer template. So basically, what you'll see here is we have these. Whoops, let me go back to that. Um, we have, this is the, these literally are the steps. And what's really cool about this is I leave this contact information there. That's where I put in all this information. This is a copy and paste. I also have, um, because I have a virtual assistant in the Philippines, I have created training videos for each and every one of these tasks. So I'm up to about 130 training videos where I'm screen sharing and I'm creating these. So I'm really taking this systems thing to the nth degree. Um, so in my template, which templates are a wonderful thing, when I get a new buyer, this is the template that we start with. And so you'll see, for example, let's just go into the option depending. So here's our critical dates email. So again, I've got a training video on how to do it. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like um, to where I go into the critical dates. Actually, um, what she does is she'll copy it. The highlighted letter, so in other words, attached is highlighted, which is a trigger to attach something. Um, these critical dates are the critical dates in the contract. Um, it also has a quick little explanation about it because how many times these days are we doing everything digital? We're not necessarily sitting across the table from people. So this again, further illustrates the resource that we are um, that we are there. So that's kind of how this Trello and the Google Sheet all comes together for the buyers. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna get back now to this. Okay, so that is what it looks like to have a buyer system. Okay, I'm rocking and rolling. Does anybody have any questions before I continue on? Any feedback? Y'all can hear me okay? This is helpful. Well, let me see. Trello. I just Oops, haven't I heard of Trello. Hmm. So what is, what is Trello? Trello is a, first of all, I don't, I am not, I, I, I'm not not technology friendly. I am, but um, my uh, prior assistant set this up for me. And let's see, I'm going to move this so I can open that back up again. Um, hold on just a second. Here we go. Okay. So Trello is, uh, it's T-R-E-L-L-O, Trello.com. And um, the free, the only reason why I pay for it is because of the number of boards that I have. And I, and I take deals and I archive them once it's done. Um, you know, it's kind of like a sky slope in that it's a place to store things. Um, it's a system, it's a checklist. Um, so what we, what we did, we worked together, I actually started with this. So I had, I put all my checklists together and then I created a task for each of these activities. And so for example, let's pull up uh, Brittany and uh, they're gonna close here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. What's really cool about this is once you do something, so for example, you know, CMAs are part of our uh, Skyslopes uh, transaction um, checklist now. So one of the things I do is I have a place for this. So once I do it, which notice it's still sitting here, um, I can click and drag it to, I can either drag it to completed task or I can drag it to uh, not applicable. 
I'm going to leave it over here because it's still going to need to be done. Um, and this was originally supposed to close uh, June 30th. This is a new construction, which I don't know how many of y'all have had that happen as well. But let me go into Palace Drive. It's supposed to close tomorrow. So, so here's here's a couple. This is the way a deal that would look. Um, this is how a deal would look that's already done. So notice all these tasks are already over here. Now, there are certain things that aren't applicable. But when I started with a complete um, template, then that's where I, that's how I know. So I, I keep some things over here forever. So like I've got the client contact information, that's so easy to grab. I know the option date and the closing and possession date. I also go ahead and attach and execute a contract. So you can do a lot of different things here in Trello. Um, but bottom line is the fr there's a free version so it's possible that you could even use that, but I love it how you can literally just like, so here's my, here are my CMAs. Um, but now that that's done, I can actually just click and drag that over here. So what's really nice about this when it comes to systems and delegating is uh, one of the tasks that my assistant does is touch every active deal every day to see, okay, what is lacking? What do we need to do? Um, you know, where are we on this? Like, for example, this one, it's an active listing, but we haven't gone under contract yet. So at this point, there's still, you know, these little tasks here to do. So Trello is just a, a technology, tech, technological digital way. There's also a Trello app. So I can go in on my phone if I'm looking quickly for contact information, um, just all kinds of good stuff. So I definitely um, recommend you consider that. If you're looking, you know, the thing about technology is use what you will use. If you want to fully digitize and you like this idea of Trello, it is a super um, intuitive type process. But if you've got your database on three by five index cards and you have a system for, you know, moving them or categorizing, rock on. I mean, whatever you do from a systems perspective, it doesn't have to be high tech. So don't let that slow you down. But at the same time, it can be high tech. And so don't feel like you have to go old school and start the way I did, which was, you know, fully papered in order to get to this place. But what I can tell you from teaching a systems class and living and eating and sleeping with these systems all day, every day is the way I have it now with Trello and Google. It's so awesome because it is easily changeable. And as you know, we're always changing here in this business. It's never the same day twice. Um, so just I'll zip through some of these home sellers. Again, these are the checklists that you're going to want to have for each and every task that you do. Um, so your pre-listing appointment checklist, I'm going to go into detail on that. Your post-listing appointment checklist, that's the follow-up that you're going to do after you've met with them. If you didn't get the commitment, it's a great way to kind of show them how you operate. Every, you know, the way I look at it is how I do anything is how I do everything. So I want to set the stage that if I said I'm going to connect them with a painter or if I said I'm going to, um, you know, follow up with them in a week or what have you, um, I'm going to absolutely do that. And that's where this post appointment checklist starts. Um, if they've committed to me, which a lot of times they do by the time I get there, um, that we've already established what's going to go my pre-listing appointment checklist that I'll go into really sets us up for just doing the deal. Um, so some of my follow-up might be scheduling the photography or scheduling the staging. Either way, there's always some level of follow-up to do after that. We have a pre-active checklist. Now this started with me whenever... Um, I mean, years ago, but most recently where it came into play before I had my virtual assistant in the Philippines was I had a, um, a physical assistant, but she just couldn't get it all done. And so what that forced us to do at that point was to peel off this pre-active checklist. And then we actually had a virtual assistant just do that piece of it. Um, and then, of course, you have the new listing checklist. So as soon as the house goes active in MLS, I have a marketing checklist. And just like with the buyers, I have an op option to pending, pending to close, and then a post-close checklist. Um, so this is my option or the pre-listing appointment checklist. And I just want to point out a couple of things on this. Again, this is the uh, original one, old school. I do a pre-listing package. 
So um, when I send you the links uh, at your request at Nicole at NicoleSmith.net, when I send you those links, you'll see that um, I have a pre-listing book. It's one that I started with uh, from the marketing team there at EXP and have customized it. Um, but I'll usually send a digital and if there's time, a hard copy of these things. Um, also, you're going if you don't already have a template, in your, um, your uh, contract software, that is a great way to save time and to systematize that process. So I have a buyer template and a seller template, and those are in alignment with what EXP needs in Skyslope. So I don't have to be scrambling to get forms at the last minute again. It makes me more efficient, makes the process more efficient. I'm not having to get back to my clients and say, oh, just one more form. If you wouldn't mind clicking through this for me, I get all of those things done up front. Um, we even have the way we, we, we save it where it's consistent with, you know, sometimes I talk about my, my deals and people, but my assistant usually talks about the deals and the property address. So we want to name it to where regardless of what people are searching on, they can see it with that. Um, there's a customized letter seller when, uh, that I copy and paste. And really this system is a copy, paste, customize because none of these things are one size fits all. There's no way to fully automate this because every deal is different, but, but you can absolutely start and run with this. Um, the pre-listing package, I do a cloud CMA. I don't do any analysis at this point. I just know that people are always surprised at what their neighbor's house really sold for. So I like to just get all that out there before we go. And then of course, there's um, all the preparation we do in advance of the CMA, which the pricing presentation is the foundation of my listing presentation. So I don't delegate much of that. Um, I will go back real quick. Actually, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, um, client database management. So I may have mentioned that, um, I know I mentioned that I'm a repeat and referral agent. Um, I have 200 and 275 families in my database and I actively work it. Now this particular class isn't about that as much as it is about having a system around your database. So for example, I put up their CRM, I use Realty Juggler. I'm gonna give you a link to that. Um, with the links that I'll be sending to you. Uh, once again, whether you're using um, Outlook or you're using an Excel spreadsheet or you're using you know, Top Producer or whatever, or three by five index cards, whatever you use, use it. it if it works, go for it. The reason I used Realty Juggler, I'll just point this out there, is part of my strategy is I send birthday cards to every person in the household. So mom, dad, kiddos, whatever. Um, I send house anniversary cards and Realty Juggler is the only online CRM that I've found that enables me to have multiple dates per family. So that's the reason why I do that. But I do a January mailing every January. And one of the things you'll get on these links is a tutorial on what that looks like. And if you, um, I'm assuming you are a repeat and referral bit based agent to, uh, and, and if you aren't, I encourage you to consider becoming that. But again, we're just consistently bringing value to our clients. So I send out every January, a, a, just a list of all the homes that have sold in their community, as well as a market update. And people tell me they put that in their vault um, as they evaluate their net worth on any given year. Um, I do a letter of the heart monthly. Um, I started with Brian Buffini back 20 years ago and still very much believe in his relationship-based business building system. Um, I don't use his materials anymore, but I do mail something physical every month. I do uh, market update videos monthly, evidence of success postcard monthlies. But bottom line is all these things, again, this class is not about um, you know, building and managing and nurturing your database, but assuming you are, have systems so that all those things get done. Okay, now I want to switch gears just a little bit, dig a little bit deeper into um, the weeds here in a way that hopefully will serve you so that you can get a full understanding of what it is that I'm talking about. Um, so on the communication system, this is what we take, this is how I take my checklists um, even and make them even more impactful. And that is, I have an order of communications. So um, I showed that to y'all on Google here. And let me get that back again. On, um, and that is what this looks like here with the um, 
all these different, this, so like, for example, the pre-listing, I've got the information, I've got a confirming appointment, what to expect, um, the cloud CMA, a follow-up, the send out listing for documents for, and then these correspond with my Trello boards. Where did I do with Trello? I think I lost my Trello board. Um, and so, so, so there's a couple of different ways to look at it. So what I'm going to share with you, for example, on the seller is this is where all these different forms get clicked and dragged once they're completed. So again, if I'm wondering where are we in the process with a particular deal, I can just go and look at the board and I can see what's outstanding, what still needs to be done. Here's a perfect example. Um, so we're like, I know this from talking with my assistant, we still have not gotten the option and earnest receipts from the contract that was executed a month ago. So I, every day she knows to ask the title company to get this, but once this is done, then she'll click it and drag it over here. Um, so that, so, so this also, so whether you use Trello or not, this also will link you to this Google Doc that you can copy and paste, again, customize and paste. So this, for example, I mentioned to you that I have a, I have a, I have a pre-listing appointment, uh, a pre-listing checklist. So this is, for example, what I do so that when I get to the listing appointment, they know what to expect. They know, you know, we've confirmed the date and time. We, I'm talked about what we're going to accomplish. Um, that it's going to take about an hour. What do you need to do in advance? I usually attach to this the listing documents um, and encourage them to have these things appraised. And then I also go ahead and have some some links, for example, to this is what they can expect um, to have whenever they get there. So it's also interactive, where it shows, like for example, they can see that I do a uh, you know the, their house will have a website. This is 913lindsay.com. So I've got all that as well as get back to where that was. Um, also have a copy of. Um, this is the, the listing, the pre-listing book, which I'll bring a hard copy or I've emailed it as well to where it looks like, it looks like this. So you can literally see. Um, so again, just setting the stage that, that there's, I should have answered by the first question I always ask is, did you have a chance to review this? And nine times out of 10, they, they haven't. But if they have, then that always is a nice touch because then I can tell that they actually are invested in the process and they've, they've done that. And then we literally just jump right into, let me get back to this. We literally jump right back into um, the pricing presentation. And then at that point, I'm asking for the business. So um, having this order, not just for the buyer, um, those are some examples. Um, but also for um, the for the buyers and the sellers, they're for the most part similar but very different. Um, it, it enables you to answer questions before they're asked, and, and also make sure that nothing slips through the cracks. Um, and here's to just some examples of that. For example, on the what to expect at the inspection, um, I always give them you know a heads up that I'm not planning to be at the inspection, and here's why. Um, and so you know, kind of coach them up a little bit on that. And then um, again, the Trello. Um, this is where you know I've shared with you literally what my boards look like. So those tasks are you know the checklist is the pre-listing checklist, the listing preactive, et cetera. Again, whether you print it on paper, have it on Excel, whether it's you doing it or an assistant doing it, um, it enables you to set the expectations and most importantly, follow through on the expectations that you, um, that you set for them. So just a quick recap again, having systems and checklists will absolutely enable you to provide a consistent process quality and results for your clients, which ultimately will yield referrals from clients time for other things and hopefully some sanity and self-care. Okay, so I'm gonna send all these things to you um, that if you'll just email me, Nicole at NicoleSmith.net, give you a list of the checklists and samples, the links to all these Google Sheets and documents, um, and a recording to this class if you're interested in going through this again um, that has that I present in EXP World every month, which is a little bit different, but um, I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of time for any questions. And then this is the perfect time as you're gearing up for your business development in 2022. And for that matter, any time is good. 
Um, so don't wait until January, but if you're watching this at a time where you can, where you can build your, your spreadsheet of your past clients, if you don't already have it, and then really give them a gift that starts off this new year and puts you in a position, again, of ongoing bringing service to them year after year. All right, questions and answers. Um, you ask the questions, hopefully I'll have some answers. I just need to plug in my computer. Any thoughts, questions, anything I've left un unsaid or unanswered? Nicole, this is Brittany Zappitz. I have a few questions. Yes. Um, one great presentation. What market are you in again? I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay, awesome. Um, on Trello, is there a way that you can share like your checklist and what you do with somebody else so that they can duplicate it? I think so. <laughs> and I say that, um, I, I think so. So if, if you already are a Trello user and already familiar with it, and the reason I think so is because I have, I have gotten a Trello board from somebody else without, com, without altering the integrity. My biggest fear, my biggest fear is sharing something and then it being altered. So what you'll see like on all these Google docs and sheets that I send to you, you can view them. Um, it's going to ex it's going to exponentially. I mean, this process, I mean, I hired a consultant about five years ago that helped document everything that I did. And so what you're seeing now in the whole Trello form is an evolution of that. So this is going to just take you, you know, five years from now in a blink to where all you have to do really is, is to customize it to your own. So I'm, I've, I've tried it okay. one time with Trello and I think that I can, it's where I give you access to it. You copy it. And then I take access back or something like that. So if you're a Trello user, um, email me about that. And let's see if we can play around with that and get you these, um, the Trello boards themselves, because that will definitely save you some time as well. Okay, awesome. And so did you do much with KV Core at all? Um, the one thing, several things. I do use it just to, you know, I, I use it for organic growth purposes. Like I, I'll use it when I run um, a Facebook ad, if I do, or share a Facebook listing. Um, I use it for I've, everyone in my database is set up to receive market updates quarterly. So there are some amazing tools in KB Core for me because I came to EXP and came to KB Core with a bunch of systems already in place. I didn't want to reinvent that wheel, um, but there are definitely some automated features that I absolutely have programmed um, that really serve me well. But I don't use their I don't use them for other purposes as it relates to my database. And then did you use a virtual assistant to set up like all your Trello and checklists? Um... Or did you just grind at it and do it yourself? <laughs> well, it's 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 a process. Um, I've I've had I've always I've had a physical assistant for about twenty years, off and on, part time, not consistent. Um, the one that I had um, prior, I've had my um, virtual assistant in the Philippines since June. Prior to that, I had one uh, assistant for three years, and she was a licensed realtor in another state, was relocated to the area. So she worked for me part time um, until she um, left to go help her husband do his business. But so it was with her help that we fine tuned these systems. And she's ultimately the one that took it to Trello for me. She found it, um, she created it. And, and then what I've gotten to do since then is just tweak it and continue to change it as the tasks and the needs continue to grow and evolve. Um, and then in preparation for hiring my virtual assistant of the Philippines, I that caused me once again to dig into this. And then again, I have a training video for each of the tasks. I mean, it's, it's the minutia folks, which um, having trained, having physically trained a lot of people over the years to be assistants. I mean, we all know the real estate learning curve is like perpendicular, right? And the time it takes us agents to train an assistant is almost prohibitive. And so what, one of the things that I was coached to do in a preparation for this virtual assistant in the Philippines was to literally document and to screen share and to show these things. And so now that they're in video form, 
I'm very hopeful that this virtual assistant will stay with me forever. But if for some reason she were to move on, it would be really easy to plug somebody else into that role and proceed in that direction. So that's why I went ahead and added. So like, so she's helped me in the evolution of these of these boards. She's helped me by adding those training videos for that particular task or that particular card, if you will. And uh, she's attached it to that. So at any point in the process, somebody could click on that particular um, that they could click on that card and then know exactly. So if I said, do this, I wouldn't have to stop long enough to explain it to them because the video is already there. Oh, that's a great idea. I appreciate that. And yes, I'll send you an email on sharing Trello. Cool. For those of you that didn't pick it up, it's more of a property or a project management system. It is absolutely not your CRM at all. Correct. Agreed. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for being here. If you go into a workplace, there's actually a tips and tricks um, Trello um, group. I had heard that, and I'm glad you said that. Thank you for sharing. I bet you they can tell me how to copy it without fear of <laughs> them changing. <laughs> I promise I'm just looking not to reinvent the wheel. I won't make any edits. I just want to be able yeah. to, okay, I just need to type this into this project. I think, well, and, and, and I, th I think if the way it, it operates, it will, once you have it, then it is absolutely yours to edit. And that would be the goal. That would just save you so much time. You just have to clone it. You clone it. Exactly. Exactly. And then I keep the original. You now have the clone that you have to, that you can then customize to your own templated buyer or seller or whatever other boards you want to use. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So much fun. What says a question? Anybody else? Here's my contact information. So if anyone, um, again, just email me, Nicole, NicoleSmith.net, so I can get you all this good information and um, connect with me on social media. And certainly um, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area since 1990, well, lifelong resident of the Metroplex, I'm a fifth generation Texan, but um, have been licensed here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area since 1995. So happy to connect you with folks if, um, if the area that I serve isn't where you're looking for, I'd happy to connect you with some great agents here in the Metroplex. Great agents company-wide, of course, but certainly here in the Metroplex. I think one of the things that just, you know, again, there's all different age ranges of realtors on here in terms of just, you know, how long we've been in business. I mean, you know, 22 years, Brittany, 25, 26 for you, 20 for me, one month, Marcy, different ones that got on here. I think, you know, for the younger agents, I think it, it, can, it can just all feel so overwhelming when you first get in. You know, and I think obviously this is something that you've developed over the years. But the one thing I have seen in 20 years, that the people that really do well and just consistently just do, you know, icon and, and, you know, 30, 40, 50 deals a year, build a team, whatever, they have systems in place that they've developed over the years, you know, to make it all work just so much smoother. I think, you know, I see so many realtors just flying by the seat of their pants, you know, all over the place. And so, and it's just, and it feels chaotic. And after a few years, the burnout factor can just get so much and come so much quicker without having those systems in place. As you start getting that in there, you just get those processes. It becomes a, you know, you, you are developing a business and you run it like a business and you treat it like a business and your clients realize you have a business and you're professional and everything about that, it just pays off in so many ways. So it is worth just, you know, again, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, exactly. it's just, you know, it's just for these younger agents that might be just be like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. But again, just one piece at a time, take this you know, one system at a time, you know, working with buyers, get a system in place, you know, you know, the seller part might be a little chaotic. Eventually get to the sellers. Now start working on some of these systems. I think you can just, you can start building something within a couple, two, three years now, over time, you've got some things in place where it's just like, wow, it's just, it's moving. And now you're teaching a class. What I see happen, you know, so don't let it overwhelm you if you're newer and it's, <laughs> it just feels like craziness, but that, that was awesome. Really, really good stuff there. Can you upload some of the, some of that stuff? Maybe you could upload some of it into the freedom team group under files. You know, you can, yeah. you can, you know, it's just some of the stuff you don't need everything, but some of those links, different things in there. You mentioned that sure. one, what was that link you mentioned? Um, 
think uh, something it wasn't Trello. It was something else. Realty Juggler. Realty yeah. Juggler. What is that? Realty yeah. Juggler. Yeah. Realty Juggler is a CRM. Um, now, like Brittany was talking about, even with KV Core, you know, my experience over the years of, you know, I did top producer for a while is, is, and it's like, even like having an iPhone, it's like there, I use this much of the capacity of a program and I don't slow down long enough to really dig deep. I just kind of go wide. Realty Juggler is priced such that that's pretty much the only thing I use it for. I use it for keeping track of dates and I do it for my monthly mailers and things like that. Um, I think it's like 169 a year or something like that. Um, Anyway, so I've got a link to that. Um, that's a great little resource if you're looking for a way to organize all those things together. But like you said, if, if you're knee deep in KV Core and that works for you, do that. If you're three and a half by five index cards, do that, whatever it, whatever it takes. Have a system of some sort. How have many of you guys have read the, the E-Myth book? That's a great book. I mean, when I first got into real estate and I got plugged into Craig Proctor's coaching program, first thing he gave us was you know, the, the e-myth revisited and it was that book and then you know then later on he came out with the one with real estate it's a it's a great book so i would totally recommend you know that you guys take a look at that so anyway any other last questions at all for nicole any other comments thoughts anything before we wrap I up i wanted to i wanted to thank nicole this is outstanding you know everybody talks about lead gen and more marketing more business, but it is the systems will, will enable you to create more volume because if not, you become uncoupled uh, if you don't have systems. And these are extraordinary. These are beyond anything that I've seen before. And I want to thank you very much. I will be emailing you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And that's a great point, David. I was on, an, I did an interview with an agent here just a little bit ago and, uh, and she's a brand new agent. I don't know if you guys saw, I was on Facebook live. She's been at, she's just got licensed in June of 2020. She iconed her first year with 42 days. Great agent, you know, whatever. But one of the things that she had to learn, like she had, she had, I think she had, she had Zillow, she was getting Zillow leads. She was using commission zinc. She was using like four or five things, a lot of money going out, no systems in place at all. And converting like this, like just a, a fraction of these, you know, and she was able to, you know, she's learning as she's going right now, even about what we just talked about. Like, She's getting those in place. She hired an assistant. That was huge, you know, and then just, and starting to get some processes in there and started, you know, she realized like, oh my God, I'm making all this money, but I'm spending so much money and we can easily do that. In the Especially without the systems in place. Oh my God. Yeah. You can generate all the leads in the world, but you'll convert, you know, one out of a hundred because you're just flying all over the place, you know, whereas if you get a system in place and some automated things in there and whatever, like it can just, it can make it so much better and more profitable at the end. So anything else, guys? We'll wrap it up. But Nicole, thank you so much. Awesome. Totally Jeff, I have one more question. I'm yes, so sorry, ahead, guys. Yeah, no worries. Go ahead. Um, so Nicole, you're like me where, you know, we started in this business and Jeff and probably other people on this call with pagers at best and a map book, <laughs> you know? And so there's been a huge, I mean, that's one thing that's not going to change. And um, so how active, like, are you on like social media? Like, you know, I just feel like every time I blink, there's another app that I feel like I need to be on, whether it's clubhouse or TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, like, and Facebook has created an issue where I've gotten maxed out on friends. So I can't grow that platform anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, can you just, I know it's kind of off subject, but well, I, th I think you, you pegged it, which is, you know, as we, as we evolve, we get to decide if we're going to continue evolving or if we're going to stay stuck. And I started when people, the, the old lady agents were freaking out because they didn't have MLS books anymore that literally looked like yellow pages, you know, when we, they were, but it was DOS based. You had to sit at a computer. And anyway, I don't, I never want to be one of those old lady agents, but I also realized my space. And so I do have some systems in place. And so my virtual assistant, for example, she is the one that if you, if you're my friend and you have a birthday on Facebook, that happy, happy birthday with the three little things is going to come from my assistant's going to do that for me. Um, I also have uh, tagged, I've got it within Facebook. You can do um, 
I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but you can set a group aside, not a Facebook group, which I do have one of those two. I have an around flower mount in the community. I that know I what serve. you're saying. You put your yes. gear maybe yes. into yes. only them get the yes. what content you want to put out. Yes. And so she will, um, she'll, she'll let me, she'll ping me if I, like, if I'm not on Facebook, cause I don't, I don't, I, I put things out on Facebook. I don't spend a lot of time in Facebook, but if there's something going on with my database, somebody loses a pet or loses a parent or whatever, um, the system is, she emails me that so that I know to then reach out to them or send them a card. So I really use the online world to be able to connect offline. Um, I, I go, Instagram, I love so much and I got really into it this summer and then just got so busy. You know, that's the biggest challenge we face, I think, is the busier we get in that technician role, the less time we have to manage the process, to be consistent with the process. But um, but I took some great classes this summer and once I get kind of my feet back under me, uh, things slow down again, then I'll kind of plan that. But there's definitely some systems um, Planoli is a one for posting on social media. Um, and so that was, that's one that I use, but I, I have not embraced, uh, TikTok. Um, I've been hesitant to do reels. Um, but otherwise I still do, you know, I think it's again, because it's referral based, it's just more about that connection. Um, so using those platforms to build connection, my growth right now is organic. I'm not paying for any growth. I'm not paying for leads. I'm not, um, I might boost a listing post just so it makes my numbers look better, but I'm not um, doing any uh, stranger marketing. Um, so everything I'm doing is either to my existing database or it's specific to my community. I do a podcast in my community um, where I interview uh, local businesses, parents, that kind of stuff. And then I have a, a corresponding Facebook group that again, my assistant, I've got a list of about 20 different sites for her to go gather data from so that there's always information coming. But um, for the most part, she's managing that for me as well. Okay, thank you. One yeah, nice does that thing, help? One nice thing I think, Brittany, about being here, it, I don't know, at least I appreciate it with EXP. I just feel like when you've got like literally the best agents across the country, doing it, then, you know, just being in workplace, I try and get in there once a day, just kind of keep up on what's going on with the company, but I will hear things. And if all of a sudden you see like, you know, here's four or five people and next thing you know, they're doing a training on, here's a group that's formed like, okay, I need to dig into this. You know, it is hard to keep up, you know, technology and all these different things. You only do so much and whatever, but I think there's a lot of this that, you know, it's nice being here to be able to kind of, you know, pick and choose what you, what you want to do with some of this, but uh, we're in the right place. That's for sure. Agreed. It is a great time, guys, I think, to just, you know, December typically a little, you know, slows down a little bit, but, you know, it's a great time to dig in on some of the stuff that Nicole just went through. Great time to, you know, buckle down and just and really get some of these things in place. So, anyway, um, David, did you want to say something? I saw you unmuted did, yourself. Did you, did you say early on that you have a new microphone? I do. Is it you not very wanna, good or is it good? It's in and out. It's in and out. Okay, good to know. I, I just, yeah, I need to keep playing with it. <laughs> I appreciate you telling me. You'll get it. Want to do yeah, it now. So, yeah. Technology. Jeez. So, guys, thank Great you very much. You. Nicole, thank you again. Okay. My we'll pleasure. be back next Tuesday. I forget what we got. We got somebody lined up. But anyway, we'll be back here again. So uh, awesome. appreciate it. Guys, have a great day. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank Bye. you, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Bye.